Hello everyone and let's go over what I read in August. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, I am Monica and I make bookish content here on YouTube and sometimes I make the occasional book to TV adaptation video which is quite rare but I hope to get more into video making and making other content. If that sounds interesting to you, I hope you give me a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below if you are wanting to see more content from me. So this past month in August, I surprisingly did read quite a lot of books and I read 10 books although I did include novellas in a graphic novel counting as one each so that did raise the number of books that I did read this month. Let's just get into what I first read and this was Paper Girls by Brian Vaughn. This is a graphic novel by the same author of the Saga comic series and I was expecting to really enjoy this one but unfortunately I didn't and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. Paper Girls is about a group of girls who are delivering newspapers and they get involved of a alien invasion from the future. Overall, the concept sounded really interesting with time travel being involved, but the art style wasn't up to my taste. And there were some mentions of like slurs, so I was like, um, I might as well just stick to the TV show adaptation that is on Amazon Prime. So I think I would just stick to that instead. I do think that the concept itself is really interesting, but I just thought it could have been better executed. Anyways, moving on to my next read that I did finish in one day and this was Final Girls by Riley Sager. This one was a really fast-paced read and it's like a slasher movie in book form and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. So the title of this book is quite significant in this book with a final girl being a sole survivor of a tragic event. There are three main final girls that we encounter in this book but we do follow one main one and her name is Quincy Carpenter who is a survivor of a massacre that killed all of her sorority sisters and her boyfriend and she is the sole survivor. Now it's been 10 years since that massacre and Quincy is now living with her new boyfriend and she is running a baking blog. But things aren't completely healed for Quincy at this point because she doesn't remember major details from that night. So Quincy is not really completely over it but I don't think going through something like that you will ever be completely over it and uh, that entire premise was really interesting to me and that what kept me reading to find out what has happened on that night and to figure out who was the killer and if Quincy was also maybe playing a part in her friend's deaths which is really morbid but I did think about that at some points in the book. There were a couple of red herrings that did get to me and I was really surprised and shocked by those but some of the things in this book were really annoying to me and that includes the personality of our main character Quincy and another final girl Sam. So they encountered with each other and it was just not <laughs> enjoyable to read. Mainly I was really annoyed by their lack of foresight and some parts of the book had me thinking did that really just happen or did that character just keep on saying the same thing? Sam, she really likes to call Quincy babe and it's really annoying. I don't know why the author thought it would be a really captivating quality of that character but I think maybe the author was trying to encapsulate modern day slang but it was really annoying. But I do have to give this thriller credit for making me still be quite engaged in finishing this book in basically one sitting. Overall, the mystery and slasher elements were really interesting to keep you glued to the page, but there were some characters' motivations and it was quite obvious to see who was against Quincy and who wasn't. I like the ending, however, the execution of some scenes could have been better, but I really enjoyed this book overall and I really do look forward to reading more of Riley Sager books. This next book was one of my anticipated reads for the summer and it was The Many Daughters of a Fong Moi by Jamie Ford. I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This book is a historical fiction with elements of magical realism, commentary on discrimination, and the role of Chinese women in history. The concept of this book was really interesting to me because there's mention of, of an experimental therapy that allows you to like heal your deep ancestral wounds and 
cultural traumas through your genetics. So that was a really interesting concept to me. And the ultimate goal of this experimental therapy is to reduce the intergenerational trauma that can get passed on. We are following the protagonist in a future timeline in 2045. Dorothy Moy and she experiences depression, anxiety, and dissociation. And she's undergoing this experimental therapy in hopes of to reducing her mental health status being passed on to her young daughter. And her daughter is showing signs of anxiety and maybe mental health issues. There are seven different point of views that we are following and they are all descendants of Fang Moy who is the first known Chinese woman to step foot into America. And this dates back to the 1800s. The different time periods were quite easy to get immersed into and learn of the characters' life stories. I enjoyed the fleshing out of the story of a Feng Mui because she's a historical figure that I didn't really hear of and it was interesting to see a fictional take on that. And with Dorothy being our main character, there is hope for her to have a happy ending but there is a trigger warning here that that is achieved through drug overuse and another thing is that with the seven different point of views that we have it was really hard to care for each character and with the theme of like recurrent traumas we did read through a lot of a string of traumas and it really did make for a sad reading experience but it is a realistic take on what can happen in a woman's life but i did really like the discussion and commentary about discrimination against chinese women in societies throughout time it was really well executed on that part however in a book such as this one it really did undertake a lot of different themes and it did get a little bit jumbled up i would say and though it was well executed it did become overwhelming to the reader. Despite that, I did overall enjoy this book. This next book that I finally managed to read was The Power Now by Eckhart Tolle. This is a self-development book with a spiritual focus and I ended up reading it a 3 out of 5 star. The first half of this book, I was really interested in the concept of being and not living in the past and future. The second half of this book was alright. Um, I think it was repeating ideas but in different ways and it got really repetitive and boring to be honest. I think this one does have good lessons for a what time you read and considering if you want to have the now as a lifestyle and spiritual methodology. I did like how it did give you steps on how to achieve this type of lifestyle but the delivery of it was sometimes could have been better. <laughs> so my next read was a adult fantasy and it was The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't too bad of a fantasy. I really liked the atmosphere and the setting of this world. And the book was really unique with exploring the different cultural and spiritual tension, ruining clan warfare, and centuries of Jin history. We do get two POVs in this book and each one is exploring a different introduction to the world of the jinn and we are introduced to the kingdom of the jinn known as Devbad. First we have Nari who is a Shafit, a half human half jinn and making a living from being a con artist and thieving from rich men. She's sharp, witty and she's able to grift her way out of tough situations. Nari also has the ability to heal and she can also speak the ancient language of the jinn. Her character really does have a strong start but then that changes when she meets a jinn warrior called Dara and that's when her independence starts to wane a little bit and she's trying to learn more about the jinn world of the Bad. But that's not to place the full blame on Nari because she's being pulled in many different directions. She's just trying to figure out what is happening around her and how is she involved in all of this gin business. There is a romance that brews between Dara and Nari and I was questioning Dara's intentions towards her. And through Dara, that's how Nari learns about her gin heritage. It did feel a bit codependent -y. I think by the end of the book, she learns that she has to take action and try to get answers on her own. And the second point of view we have is Ali, who is a prince and he is a jinn. Ali is a devout Muslim and he really dislikes the violence against the Shafits in Babibad. He's really a sharp contrast to Nahri's point of view because he grew up in a world of privilege and wealth compared to Nahri needing to like con her way to earn money. 
and Ali, he's also a trained warrior and he wields like a cool magical fire sword which does bring to mind like really nice imagery whenever there's like a fight scene with Ali in it. So his point of view brings us to the world of politics in Devagad and he is the second son of the king and he then struggles to uphold the wishes of his father. Ali's character was one that was quite consistent throughout the entire book and he's not really challenged that much but he does get challenged at the climax which is near the end of the book and he does come off as one-dimensional before that point but then he does have more development and I do think he will have more character development in book two. Okay, so with the world building, it was super, super slow. So about 70% in with this book, it was so slow. It was a struggle to get through, but once you get past that point, I think it was worth it. Maybe it was just me that thought there was a lot of info dumping and maybe I was really overwhelmed with all the political and cultural roles of this new world but I really did love the Jin mythology that we got and it was really unique with the different creatures and fights and magical systems. There was also wonderful Muslim representation. We have Middle Eastern settings and we also have POC characters. The City of Brass really does deliver on lush world building, mythological creatures, Jin mythology, and we also have characters that you can cheer on. So I will be continuing the series, but I just don't know when since so many books, so little time. My next read is a YA fantasy, YA fantasy romance, and it was These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan, the first in a duology. And this one did kind of remind me of Avatar, but not really. And overall, I think it was unique on its world, and I did rate it a 3 out of 5 star. So we are introduced to Brie or Aubriella, that's her full name. And she lives in a world that has a fae world that's separated from the human world. The fae in this book is really fun and I think that in general fae are really fun to read about. And we also get to see the introduction of like the fae courts and politics of the unseelie and seelie courts that Brie is being introduced to. Brie herself is a thief and she's a good lockpick and she also steals from the rich in order to make rent which she is currently living in her aunt's cellar with her younger sister Jazz. However, a theft goes wrong and to run away from the human police, Brie goes into the Fae world and there she is right in the middle of warring courts and politics and a brewing war and she's also in the part of a love triangle between Prince Ronan of the Seely Court and Prince Finn of the Unseely Court. This book was really super fast paced, it was fun to read and I couldn't put it down. It really does have simple world building which I do like. There are a lot of betrayal, schemes, lies, and manipulation that we have our characters run into. Brie does struggle on who to trust, but I think it was quite obvious on who she would choose. And then she's like, oh no, did I make the right choice? With that aspect, Brie does come off as a little bit naive with understanding of that not every fae wants what's best for her. I personally really loved Finn because he's like a prince that's down on his luck and he's just trying to get back his rightful place. I think the love triangle itself was really fun overall and it was definitely a really great start to this duology and I'm really excited to get to book two. Okay, so these next two books are part of the Skyward series by Brendan Sanderson. They're the two novellas that I read this month. So the first novella is called Sunreach and then the second novella is Read On. So the first novella Sunreach, I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars and I think this takes place during book 2, Star Sight. There's a lot of exploration on the origins of the slugs that are in this book and we learn a lot more about that. And with Sunreach, I think it was a really fun and short novella and to see where other characters are up to. But with Read On, it was a little bit too much. <laughs> with Read On, I rated a 3.75 out of 5 stars and it did continue off from where the first novella ended. And I think with Read On, I was just thinking that these novellas could have been a lot shorter. Although the novellas are quite important to read, I think, before book 3 is tonic. It was just a lot of unnecessary information at times and it just could have been shorter. In general. Okay, and then the next read I finished was Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one I rated a 5 out of 5 stars and I was really in love with this one, but I won't say much of my review here in this wrap up because I did upload 
a separate video covering what I thought of this book and if you're interested in that I'll link that in the i above and in the description box below but some really quick thoughts on this one I really did love how it was centered around a older athlete that's making a comeback and there was also discussion about double standards in sports and how persistence can really pay off but if you do want to check out my full review I'll link that everywhere <laughs> Okay, and then my last read of August was Cytonic by Brennan Sanderson. It's book three in the Skyward series. I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars, which is quite a low rating for Brennan Sanderson for me. But this one was just so long-winded. It was a lot of repetitive themes from, I think, book two, Star Sight. I just wasn't engaged in the events that Spencer, our main character, was going through in this one. Cytonic is definitely a filler book. And we do get a lot of character development in Spencer and Mbot and also with their relationship. I really wanted to see more of the Skyward crew finally being reunited with Spencer, but we didn't get that. I think that's why there were the novellas that I just mentioned previously. So they were like filling in the gaps between of what Spencer was doing in book three. This book is necessary for a key plot line, but with that repetitive nature that I mentioned is that in book two, Star Sight, we do follow Spencer on a new world and we made a whole new cast of characters. In book three, the same thing happens and I was like, again, please. I really do love the ability that Brandon Sanderson has to connect all these creatures and alien worlds and expanding the Skyward universe. It's really great that he does that and it's really complex, but I think it could have been done on a quicker timeline so Zytonic would have been so slow to me. I just get bored of the concept of traveling in Cytonic and I did really like Spencer and Mbot's relationship and friendship that we do get to see. Other than that, the ending to Cytonic was wild and it was really hard for my mind to wrap around the ending and we do get to see more of what Delvers are. I do hope in book four we do get to see Spencer and the Skyward Flight reunited and to see how this series concludes. So uh, that was my reading month in August and I really do hope I could read more in the upcoming months but I am going back to school and I have work so my reading might go in the back burner but hopefully not. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below if you're interested to get more bookish content from me and ring that bell to get notified. I'll see y'all soon.